we're here on the East Coast in Florida and talking about the St. Lucie Estuary and Indian River Lagoon, going from, of course, Cape Canaveral all the way down to Jupiter Inlet. Uh, but this, Florida was a, a water system that was actually historically would flow from the upper chain of lakes in Orlando to Kissimmee River, it meandered down gradually, oxbowing back and forth in a 105 mile long river into Lake Okeechobee. And that whole water system with two miles wide on either side of the Kissimmee River floodplain, that used to take about six or eight months from the water to get from the upper chain to the lake. And then the lake used to flow to the south, and you can see that remnant of that 60 mile wide kind of path of this river of grass. And as the water in Lake Okeechobee would flood over and flood to the south, very slowly would move down to the south tip of Florida and Florida Bay. And that was uh, all sawgrass marshes and uh, beautiful sawgrass and slowly flowing would evaporate up into the air and, and condense into clouds and rain back and would also percolate down into the groundwater. And what's happened is, is uh, that has been interrupted. That river of grass has been blocked off uh, because they built the dike around Lake Okeechobee uh, for those hurricanes and came across in 26 and 28. They, they built the dike around the lake about 35 foot high and improved these two canal outlets from the lake to control the water level. And that's to the St. Lucie Estuary on the east coast and to the Caloosahatchee Estuary over here on the west coast. And those two estuaries are critical estuary habitat for our uh, south coastal Florida. These coastal estuaries are really, really important. And so what's happened though, we disrupted them by dumping tons and tons and billions of gallons of water out into there. And the pollution has caused a really disruption in those estuarine habitats. But it's also blocked that flow to the river of grass. And so since then, this agricultural area all south of the lake, about 700,000 acres, it is known now as the Everglades Agricultural Area, became primarily uh, cropped out with sugarcane. And sugarcane grown by the U.S. Sugar Corporation at first in the 1930s, and then again by the Fon Ewell family from Cuba moved up in the 1950s, formed Florida Crystals, which now grows another large areas of sugar. So totally about uh, 500,000 acres out of that 700,000 are used for that kind of sugar cane. Unfortunately, all that pollution from the farming of sugar cane also went into the Everglades system, and there have been numerous lawsuits over the years to try to stem that pollution and stop that pollution from coming in. The problem is now, of course, that the lake, whenever the lake gets too high, and we've channelized the Kissimmee River, um, cut right through those oxbows, and now it takes less than three days for the water from there to reach the the lake, and then now it doesn't even get down to the Everglades. So the Everglades are starving, the lower east coast water supply is not there, it's not percolating in, and the farmers are getting perfect water conditions. And so we need to get back some of that flowway south and, and get back some of that agricultural land to move that water south. Because right now the two entities, the Army Corps of Engineers, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and the South Florida Water Management District operate these canals and structures. And ever since we built canals to drain the Everglades and drain this, the, the lake and so forth, we dump about 1.7 billion gallons a day to the Atlantic and Gulf of Mexico of fresh water that used to be down into South Florida and rehydrate not only the Everglades for the environment, but also the water supply needed for Lower East Coast. So it's really critical that we get some of that natural flow back and stop polluting these coastal estuaries and save that water. So if we're about saving the Kissimmee River and, and the upper chain and restoring that oxbow and those floodplains to store it there, if we're saving the lake to keep it as a lake, not a reservoir, it should be a lake and very naturally, and not discharge these estuaries, save these coastal estuaries, allow that water to go south and go back to the Everglades the way it used to, nice and clean and very slow flowing. It used to take about two years to get down to the bottom here totally. So that, that's really critical to restore that. And we're working to try to get the Corps of Engineers and the district, because the district owns, South Florida Water Management owns three outlets to the south. The Corps of Engineers owns the three outlets, that two, two of them go east and west and another outlet to the east. So that's critical to get them to, to you know, stop the management they're doing, put that water back south, and stop discharging and wasting it to the coastal estuary. Well, Lake Okeechobee, as we talk about, is, is connected to the St. Lucie Canal and the Caloosahatchee Canal to the west, which are the primary outlets from the lake. 
But also in our area, in the St. Lucie watershed, our C23 and 24 canal that are not connected to the lake, but drain this upper uh, basin for the watershed of the St. Lucie for agriculture into the north fork of the St. Lucie. So that's uh, also some kind of local agricultural runoff that we experience in the St. Lucie watershed, again, not connected to Lake Okeechobee. And also out that canal along uh, the C44 or St. Lucie Canal is another part of the watershed, about 116,000 acres of also citrus land that drains into the canal. So we may not even get discharges from the lake. We're still having to deal with discharges from our own watershed primarily C2324 uh, and the C44 basin around the C44 canal. So that could rain all locally, could run off into there, and we have to really get upstream and stop it at all those different sub-basins within that, within that watershed.